In this video, I'm going to explain what coterminal angles are and how we can find a couple examples of each. We're going to have a positive coterminal angle, um, and those are going to always be positive angles. And we'll also have negative coterminal angles, and those angles will always, always, always be a negative angle. We are going to use one type of formula, or one method here. In order to get a positive coterminal angle, we're going to take our angle, our initial angle, and the coterminal angle is going to be usually like the other side of the angle, or the inverse if you want to think about it that way. Um, but to get a positive angle, we're either going to add or subtract a multiple of 360 degrees. So we're either going to add 360 degrees or we're going to add 720 degrees. Or we would add, uh, you know, three times 360 if we needed to do that, although um, that'll be a rare case. But sometimes we can still subtract 360 degrees and still get a positive angle. And so in those cases, we're going to use subtraction, even though it seems weird to subtract to get a positive. Uh, we're going to be able to do that as well. So either way you do it, though, you must end up with a positive angle measurement in order for it to be a positive coterminal angle. Similarly, to get a negative, we're either going to subtract or add. And the reason why I put subtract on top here and positive over or plus on top over here because in most cases you'll add, but not always. And uh, and to get the negative, in, in most cases you'll subtract 360, but I mean not always. And we'll look at examples of each. So either going to subtract or add a multiple of 360 degrees. And we must, must, must end up with a negative value if we want it to be a negative coterminal. Okay? So while this may not make any sense to you right now, we're going to do some visuals, do some examples, and hopefully it will be clear by the end of the video. Okay, Let's get into some graphs. The first example we'll do is we'll say that we have an initial angle measuring 120 degrees. So we measure our initial angle. We're going to be measuring things in standard position. So standard position means we start on the positive x-axis with our initial ray. It's our initial. And I want to measure 120 degrees, so I got 90 plus another 30 degrees, so something like this. And again, in this video, I'm going to be estimating my angle measurements. If you have a protractor, you're more than welcome to do very accurate measurements. But again, this is just the estimation, approximately. Just to give you an idea what talking about with these concepts. This is a positive angle, so it's going to open clockwise, counterclockwise, sorry, open in this direction. So that would be our initial angle. So that's all well and good. Let's find the positive coterminal. One easy way that you can think about coterminals is uh, by defining this name, coterminal. Co meaning together, that prefix means together or with. Terminal means end, so as long as we have an angle that ends together, then it must be a coterminal, right? And we're always ending at this terminal side. So if I could possibly draw another angle that starts with the same position and ends at the same position, but is not this angle, then we would be coming up with a coterminal angle. So if you're thinking that it probably is obvious that if we just drew a negative angle, we could start at the same spot and end at the same spot. And that would be our negative coterminal, so that one seems easy enough. So let's start there. The negative coterminal angle is going to start at the same spot. It's going to end at the same spot, but it's going to be a negative angle. So visually, I can find my negative angle by just drawing it opening the other way starting and stopping at the same spot that would be our 
our negative coterminal angle. And we could figure out the measurement by doing the math. So I started with 120 degrees as my initial angle. And if I just subtract 360 degrees, that would give me um, the first negative value that I could come up with. It's always got to be either adding or subtracting 360 or multiples of 360. So no other numbers there. So if I just subtract 360 degrees once, I end up with a negative value. And that's the first negative value that I come to. And uh, a lot of books will describe your answers of coterminals as being coterminal angles that measure less than 360 degrees. So they're always asking you to find that lowest, that first um, either negative value or first positive value that you can come up with. Uh, coterminal angles are actually things that exist um, infinitely amount. So like I could continue to subtract 360 degrees as many times as I want and continue to come up with possible coterminal angles that are negative coterminal angles. Um, but I mean, we nobody wants to spend all day doing that. So we're always trying to find the lowest or the first one that you can get to. Um, so we only have to subtract it once to find our first negative value. And we end up getting negative, what do we got here, negative 240. And we can visualize it. It's slightly more than 180 degrees, but not quite 270. And it's negative, so it's opening clockwise. So yeah, it looks about right. Negative 240 degrees. That would be the first negative coterminal that we could find. And again, you could subtract another 360, come up with another negative value. It is a coterminal value. But uh, just to be on the same page, we want to describe coterminal angles as being the first one that we can get to. Because that way we can all get the same answer. To find the positive coterminal angle, we are going to open the exact same direction, but we're going to do a full rotation first, and then we're going to end on the, on the terminal ray there. So visually it looks like this. We're going to start at the same spot. We're going to do a full rotation first, and then end at our terminal ray. And if we were to measure that angle, it would be a positive angle, and it would be described as a coterminal angle because it starts at the same spot, ends at the same spot. But it's a different angle, and it's a different measurement. So we start with our initial 120, and if I just add 360, that would be the first or lowest positive coterminal angle that I could find. So if we add them together, we get 480 degrees. So that's a full rotation plus 120 degrees. So that seems right. So there's an example of, of a positive and a negative coterminal angle using just a, a simple uh, angle measurement here. Let's see what happens when we make it a little bit more complicated. say that we start with an angle that's already over 360 degrees. Let's say we have an, an initial angle of 420 degrees. So if I want to draw that initial angle, let's draw our initial ray, standard position. I'm going to do a full rotation, 360 degrees. And I know I need an additional 60 degrees to get me up to 420 degrees. So if I measure a 60 degree angle, approximately looking like that, then that full rotation plus 60 degrees would give me the total of 420 degrees. If I want to find the positive and negative coterminals, I make sure that my angle starts and stops at the same spot. And we can figure it out uh, numerically. And we can look at it graphically. Sorry, this is negative. Negative coterminal. All right, so we got 420 degrees. Now I can add 360 degrees, and I can come up with 780 degrees, and that is a possible positive coterminal. But it's not the lowest one. It's not the first one that we could find. So in this case, I'm not going to add 360 to find my lowest positive coterminal. 
what I'm going to end up doing is subtracting 360 degrees because when I do that I still end up with a positive angle measurement. If I do 420 minus 360 I still end up with positive 60 degrees. So that would be the first positive coterminal that is possible and that would be the answer that we're looking for. While 780 was not incorrect it was just not the lowest positive coterminal angle. So visually so we know that our, our initial angle did a full rotation, but this 60 degree angle doesn't have to do a full rotation. It's just from the initial, starts at the same spot, and ends at the terminal right there. There's the 60 degrees right there. So it didn't have to do a full rotation, but this angle did start and stop at the same spot, and it was not our initial angle. So this is our positive coterminal. Let's try and find our negative coterminal. Visually, we can see that if we start here and work backwards, going in a negative direction or a clockwise direction, we could start there and end at the terminal spot by simply doing that. So not quite a full rotation. So our negative coterminal should be less than 360 degrees. Let's see what it looks like. If I start with my initial 420 degrees and I subtract 360 degrees, we just discovered that we end up with positive 60 degrees. So that's not a negative uh, angle measurement. So that's not a negative coterminal. So what we need to do is subtract 360 degrees once more. So if we take 60 degrees and subtract 360 degrees, we get a negative 300 degrees. And that would be the first negative value that we come to. That would be the first negative coterminal angle. And that would be this angle right here. Approximately 300 degrees. So we could also think about this another way. Again, when I described it initially, we had that K value there. So if I do 420 and I want two rotations negatively, then we would subtract 2 times 360, which would be 420 minus 720, which would equal our negative 300 degrees. So you can either use that formula and substitute um, rotation values for K, or you can simply just keep subtracting 360 degrees until you get to a negative value. And the first one you get to is your initial negative coterm. Alright, we can do all of this, describe it the exact same way using radians, just the same way. So if I want to do the exact same thing, but now describing everything in terms of radians, we can do it just the same. So our formulas are going to be slightly different. Let's say I start with an, an initial angle of pi over 2 radians. So our formulas now are going to look like this. We're going to have our initial angle. We're going to be adding or subtracting not 360 degrees. We want the equivalent, which is 2 pi. So in radians, we're going to be working with 2 pi. And for positive coterminals, we want to end up with a positive radian measurement. And for our negative coterminals, we would do the exact same thing. Either subtract or add 2 pi until we get our first negative value. And that would be our negative coterminal in radians. So let's do one example here just to see what it looks like. Uh, pi over 2 radians, um, you can always think about that um, as we got uh, thirds until we get to halves right here and then we get a full pi so half of a full pi would be 90 degrees so that's just this angle right here so draw our initial rays our terminal rays and that's our angle measurement to measure pi over 2 radians and then if I want to describe the positive coterminal I would do pi over 2 plus 2 pi and we want to get common denominators here so I'm going to change that up to 4 over 2 pi. Don't forget that there's an invisible 1 right there. So when we add them together, we get 5 halves pi radians. So there's numerically, visually, it would be an angle that is a positive angle, but does a full rotation first and then ends there. And our negative would start here and go to that direction. I'm doing it real quick because I'm running out of time here, but I'm going to leave the math for you. That would be pi over 2 minus 2 pi, and that should give you this angle measurement in radians. 
So good luck uh, finding coterminals of angles.